So far we've been discussing biodiversity and how humans can impact biodiversity and we've looked at habitat loss as a way that we impact biodiversity, invasive species, pollution, in particular I gave you the case study of the honeybee colony collapse disorder which is uh, linked to the neonicotinoid pesticides that we're using in our agricultural industry, population growth and urban sprawl, Climate change is something we're going to look at in relation to the polar bear populations and then overconsumption of resources we'll look at in the next couple of slides. So the current total polar bear population in the Arctic is about 26,000 polar bears. The polar bears hunt seals on winter sea ice and they rely on seasonally and permanently ice covered marine waters in the northern hemisphere of the Arctic and subarctic in Canada Denmark, Greenland, Norway, Russia, and United States, Alaska area. So they really do rely on this sea ice in order to be successful hunters. Well, the issue is that sea ice is melting at a faster rate as a result of the climate change gases that have accumulated in our atmosphere. In 2008, um, the National Park Service published a final rule in the Federal Register listing the polar bear as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. This listing is based on uh, the most current research which shows that the loss of sea ice threatens and will likely continue to threaten the polar bear habitat. Any significant changes in the abundance, distribution, or existence of sea ice will have effects on the number and the behavior of these animals and their prey. This loss of habitat puts polar bears at risk of becoming endangered in a foreseeable future. So the in, in Endangered Species Act has been put into play for the polar bear and it's now considered to be a threatened species. Research scientists are projecting that by 2050 we're going to see a 30 to 35 percent decline in polar bear populations and that they could be potentially extinct from the wild by the year 2100. And this is just a picture of a polar bear that has been hunting. Now we're going to shift gears and look at overexploitation. This was the O in the acronym of HIPGO in relation to how humans are impacting biodiversity. So the example I'm going to give you for overexploitation is the rhino horn. So the rhino horn is valued at over $75,000 per kilogram. This is actually two times the price of gold and platinum. It is more valuable on the black market than diamonds or even cocaine. There are less than 4,800 black rhino remaining in Africa and Vietnam is the top destination for rhino horn usage. So as I depict here this is the number of rhinos that have been poached over the time frame. In 2008, 83 rhinos documented. In 2012, 668 rhinos were documented as being killed for their horns. In 2015, 1,175 rhinos documented as being killed for their horns. So within the last eight years, over 5,000 known rhinos have been poached in South Africa. There are only some 18,900 white rhinos remaining and the number for the black rhinos is even smaller at about 2,000 in South Africa. So South Africa is home to 74 percent of Africa's remaining rhino population so we definitely have to look at this and try to figure out a resolution to the poaching of the rhino for the horns that they have. One of the main issues related to poaching is that there's a demand and because the resource is so rare people are willing to pay top dollar for the rhino horn or maybe the elephant ivory and so on. It is an illegal trade. It's estimated that there's 1.1 million dollars per hour being made in this illegal trade. It is the fifth largest global illegal trade after drugs, counterfeiting, human trafficking, and oil. So what's going on? Why is this trade occurring? Well, the pet trade is part of it. Um, it's contributing to it that wild species are being depleted by the pet trade. Also, exotic plants are often illegally gathered as well. So the value of these wild and rare species is resulting in declining populations because of their increased black market value and that they're valued at such a high dollar people are willing to trade them even if it's illegal. 
the rare species are valuable in the wild as well because they can result in ecotourism that brings money back into that economy. However, poachers will go after the species because they can get top dollar for it on the black market. We are seeing a trend where there are some poachers that are putting down their weapons for killing animals and turning towards starting ecotourism businesses because there's a longer, more sustainable effect with that than poaching and killing animals. So let's talk about some facts on poaching and overexploitation. About every four days, a ranger that works for the National Park Service and is hired to protect these animals is killed in the line of duty. This is a high risk occupation. The fact that people are willing to kill a person in order to get the horn from a rhino is in itself mind boggling. In 2012, 28 tigers were killed by poachers in India. The most was 46 tigers in 2005. So we have tigers that are being killed and illegally traded for parts of their bodies. In 2012, 27 ele elephants were poached in Africa. So it's still an ongoing problem. As far as elephants are concerned, the ivory is currently at its highest price than it's been in the past 20 years. 23 tons of ivory were seized just last year. That's the equivalent to about 2,500 elephants. 1,200 tusks were seized in Hong Kong alone for being illegally traded. So some species that are um, targeted for this illegal trade, we'll go over them, is first the India Indian tiger. It, the estimated population is about 3,200 species. Looking at this range, the dark gray depicts where this tiger used to live and survive, and now the red indicates where it's located now. So the decrease in the range of where this tiger lives is partially correlated to habitat fragmentation and population growth of people, but even more so the hunting and illegal trade of the tiger. The black rhino, which I mentioned earlier, the range of the black rhino is depicted in gray. That was the historical range, and now these little red islands within the gray zone indicate where the black rhinos exist today. Again, this population is extremely low and is less than 4,800, and I mentioned in South Africa, that's where more than 70% of the black rhinos are located. And this is a species that is hunted and killed for its horn. The African elephant used to cover most of Africa in the gray zone, and now it's only present in the red areas that are depicted on this map. The African elephant population dropped from about 26 million elephants that once lived in the gray range to 600,000 elephants. In the 1950s, about 250 elephants were being killed per day as a result of harvesting their ivory, which is just an amazing number to try to comprehend. In 1978, the African elephant was listed as a threatened species under the Endangered Species Act. A special rule was established that allows for commercial ivory trade to continue, including the import and sale of African elephant ivory. This is unfortunate that the trade of ivory still is allowed despite the fact that this has been deemed a threatened species. In 1989, CITES, which I'll describe in the next couple of slides, the Convention and International Treaty of Endangered Species, agrees to list the African elephant um, on Appendix 1, and as a result, there was a ban on the international sale of ivory, which went into effect in 1990. So in 1978, the U.S. declared this species as a threatened or endangered species, and then almost 10 years later, an international agency that regulates the trade of animals decided to ban international sale of ivory. So currently you're not allowed to trade ivory and hence if you do you're doing it illegally on the black market. <clears throat> In 1989 as I mentioned about 600,000 elephants remained and the African Elephant Conservation Act was passed to ban the import of African elephant ivory 
into the United States. So we basically shut down the demand in the U.S. saying it's not allowed to come in. In the 2012 time frame, there was a growth of a consumer class in China that increased the demand for ivory. The price for ivory in China reaches $1,000 per pound in Beijing. Okay, let's look at the Asian or Indian elephant. The former range is depicted in gray, and you can see it stretched into uh, China as well as most of India. The red color indicates where this elephant is now present, and the estimated population was 200,000 about a century ago, and now there's less than 35,000 of these elephants remaining. I mentioned the Indian tiger earlier that has an estimated population of about 3,200. We are starting to see a recovery in this population since 2006. As you can tell, uh, in India itself, the numbers have increased about 2,200. And this is depicting where the Indian China is present the most, obviously in India. There are some in Russia, Indonesia, with very few remaining in China, Vietnam, and Laos. Another example of overconsumption of our resources is how we're currently harvesting sharks. Many fishermen prefer to, pr prefer to practice what's called shark finning instead of bringing the whole shark to the market. And that's because the fins are far more valuable than the rest of the body. Sometimes the fins will sell for as much as $500 a pound. Now this is an extreme price at $500 a pound. On average, they're about $13 a pound for the fin itself. The meat from the shark is really only worth about 90 cents a pound. So basically what's going on is that the fishermen are choosing just to keep the shark fins, only about 1-5% to 5 of the shark's weight, and they throw the rest of the shark away rather than having the less valuable parts take up space on the boat. The fin sharks are often thrown back into the ocean alive without their fins, where they do not die peacefully. Instead, they're unable to swim properly, they're bleeding profusely, and they suffocate or die of blood loss. So this is actually being considered animal cruelty at this time in regards to how the sharks are being harvested. Now, the shark is actually a keystone species in the ocean. Over one million are being killed annually in response to exaggerated media reports on shark attacks. They're also being harvested for the fins and for Asian pharmaceutical cure-alls. It's estimated that more than 100 million are being killed yearly for shark fin soup. The problem with this is that they do not reproduce at a high rate. They only give birth once a year. An example I can provide to you is the northwestern Atlantic population of the scalloped hammerhead shark. It declined from around 155,000 sharks in 1981 to less than 26,000 sharks in 2005. Some of our shark populations have decreased by 70% because of shark finning. So such dramatic population declines in a keystone species is going to have a ripple effect throughout the rest of the ecosystem. For instance, the loss of the smooth hammerhead shark caused their prey rays to increase. The larger ray population now eats more scallops and clams and other bivalves. This not only hurts the bivalve population and therefore the biodiversity of the ecosystem, but it's harming human fisheries as well. Furthermore, many coastal populations make money from the sharks that entice vacationers into their communities for ecotourism. One estimate for the hammerhead shark suggests that a live shark over the course of its lifetime is worth $1.6 million, which is a great deal higher than the $200 that the dead shark can sell for. A recent study from the University of British Columbia projected that shark ecotourism will be far more value than the global shark fisheries in just a few years. So we're hoping that a shift to ecotourism can benefit the shark populations and help stop the shark finning that's going on. I do have a video for you to watch related to shark finning and I've included it under the D2L content folder for this week so please take time to watch that video. Just so you know in the US shark finning has been prohibited since 2000 and in 2011 the Shark Conservation Act of 2010 was passed to include stronger prohibitions against shark finning and illegal import of shark fins. In the US it's illegal to bring shark fins into port separated from the body parts.